All right, now we're live. <laughs> hey guys, happy December. Welcome to another DIY Courage. Um, this month, as everyone's getting ready for the frazzle, the hecticness, I have, we have a really special guest this time, but I don't want to get into it just yet, but I just want you guys to stick around because this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm joined with Sarah Bendrick from DIY Network, I Hate My Yard, and soon to be a new show, Build Bend It, it like, like Beck, Beck, is that, Build It Like it, Beckham, sorry. <laughs> it's like Bend It Like Beckham, but we, like, you know, we played with words, so Build It Like Bendrick. Bendrick. <laughs> get one shot and hopefully it goes well and that they order a series so fingers crossed oh i hope so fingers crossed how can they not though that's crazy it's so yeah you never know you never know it's very it's a very fickle industry so <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, and soon to be a new author correct and published author author soon i finally finished my book oh my god it was so Yay. much fun. it was so cool like i learned so much about myself and so much about like I'm not, I don't think I'm a natural writer. So it was like, you know, I'm a builder. <laughs> so it was like, like, train, train myself to be like, no, organize uh, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Organize text. I, yeah, I give you a lot of credit because I'm very kind of fly by the seat of my pants. I have a hard time staying focused. I want to kind of start working on one project and then I might see something else. And I mean, I can just do complete projects, but I think writing yeah. would be tough. So what is that behind you? Brittany. Oh, yeah. So um, I, I want to tell you about this. This is pretty cool. This is, uh, I've been cleaning out the garage. We had our annual termite inspection was on, um, wow, I don't know what, last week, one day. And so for the termite inspection, you had to clear everything out from the sides of your garage so they can, you know, search the perimeter and do the full inspection. So when I'm getting ready to put stuff back together and put things away, I'm like, you know what? I have so much scrap wood. I really want to just get rid of some of this stuff. And so I made this really cool, it's it's not done yet, but it's a sign. It's a bunch of scrap wood that was in the garage. Some of it was new and some of it was old. And um, I have experimented with making things look aged before. That's Blazes awesome. and stains. But this time I actually used a blowtorch for some of it. Like you can see how it's like kind of burned up there. Yeah, I do, I do. And so you burn so, that with the torch, and then what's all this, the text or the drawings? Okay. What is that? So that's the other cool thing. So this is, um, I transferred it. I'm really having a hard time hearing with these earphones. Hang on a sec. Oh, really? Oh, my God. You have to show me how this. Okay, you know I'm going to show you. Are you ready? Yes. So, so ready. I, saw this on, I saw this on YouTube. I used a shoebox and my phone <laughs> to... What? Project this, all right? Yeah. What? So here, let's see. Project? No. Pay attention. Pay attention. Okay. Okay. Here's the shoe box, what? and there's black paper inside. This is a magnifying glass, Are and I just made like a little band that with wire. And let's see if I can. Uh, you'll be able to see kind of, but not really. No way, really. Can you see how it's like lighting up through there? And then yeah. in the dark, that'll project onto the wall. What? I've never even heard of, I never, I mean like, it makes sense, but wow, I'm, I'm super impressed. Like I'm, I'm really, I really want to try this. It's not, like it's, it's a little bit fuzzy, but you have to kind of move the shoe box back and forth. You have to move your phone back and forth until you get the right size. But then right. I could tweak um, my design which I did in Photoshop, just kind of pull a lot of stuff together and play with the type and stuff. So I'll paint it tomorrow, but probably not tonight. <laughs> Too tired wow. tonight. Wow. So I mean, what are you going to paint? Are you going to like paint in the letters? Because I mean, it looks cool as it is. Yeah, that's just chalk. So yeah, I'm probably just going to use white and red paint and paint in the letters and then maybe distress it a little bit. And um, oh, then it's going to go over the mantle because I measured the space over our mantle. Wow. Oh my God, you are so handy. I love it. It's so cool. The nice thing too is it used up a bunch of scrap wood that some of it was old and just had this character, but it was just little pieces and uh -huh. I'm like, you know, I don't want to throw it away, but I really don't need all these little pieces of scrap wood laying around. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's, that's, you know, I have a lot of scrap at the job site and I'm like, let's not throw it away. Um, but I was like, what am I going to do with it? But that, that's fun. I actually, um, maybe I'll try to make a bar sign. We did this, um, wall for the pilot. 
and I can't show you because it has to like, till it airs. But um, uh -huh, right. wood wall, and and I kind of need like I want to do a sign, but um, I was thinking about using a wood burning pencil, but I I've used wood burning pencils like on cedar and stuff like that, and if you leave it in direct sun, like as the wood ages, like the burn kind of like I don't want to say chips oh. off, but it like, comes off. Yeah, but, you know. You um, know one thing you could try, I don't know if you can do, but I think you can make a metal stencil and then burn, you know, in the stencil. Do you know what I mean? Oh, almost like a, like, what do they call that? A branding iron? Kind of, but yeah, I mean, you just basically do the blowtorch over the metal. I haven't tried it yet, but I saw someone was doing that online. Oh, is it? I thought that'd be kind of neat. Cut the down. negative space. Mm -hmm. For the blowtorch, not the imprint. Or is the metal imprinting or are you putting the metal on no. the pencil and then you're the metal the metal will be shielding the wood got it oh that's not a bad idea so anywhere where there's no metal would burn i yeah. think theoretically i did see someone who did it it looks pretty cool but yeah. i haven't tried it yet I'm, i've still been playing around i've been um i i have a new sponsor and it's burn zomatic and so i've been playing around with um with their torches it's a lot of fun oh, <laughs> once, once you go through your factory Okay, that, we'll do. We'll true. definitely go. You should go on Instagram and look at my stories. I think it'll still be live. Um, I took one last night to show how I was burning the wood. It was pretty cool. You know what? I don't understand the Instagram stories, like how you do them and all that. Like, it's like you, you can't pre-record. You have to be doing them in the moment, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. You have to do them live. They're Wait, they're kind of like Periscope or Facebook Live, essentially. I see. I just got to remember to like when I'm doing something cool to be like, oh, get on Instagram and push go. <laughs> you know, it's kind of fun. I mean, it, you know, you get to hear the people's voices a little bit and it's not so scripted. I don't know. It's, I like it. But it, the thing I don't like is that it only lasts for 24 hours, which is kind of the same thing with, um, oh, really? Was it Periscope? Yeah, I think Periscope was the same way. Yeah, and I don't like that. I like a little bit more permanence. But, but. Oh, wait, all those videos. Only last for twenty four hours. I think so. <laughs> now, now, now I'm like, maybe I should check my phone to see. I don't know if it archives them anywhere. That makes sense to me. That's interesting. So I wouldn't want to do like um, scenarios on it. I would just want to do like, hey, this is what I'm doing right now, kind of things. Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. So, oh, well, you can't tell. Yeah, it's too bright. My story is still on there. If you guys are watching and live, check, go to Pretty Handy Girl on Instagram and click on my stories, and you'll see how I did this. All right, I'm going to um, see. I, yeah, I think they, they disappear after 24 hours. You can save them to your phone. You can archive them to your phone, but on Instagram, they're only for 24 hours or plus or minus. Oh, whoever thought of that is genius. They're like, we can't. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I like the idea of having. And the Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, gosh, you're trying to be so like, holiday-like, so it's making me excited for Christmas and all that. Oh, you're good. Yeah, our neighborhood's all lit up, and I, I'm just almost done decorating the house, but not quite. I need to finish that tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my God, I haven't been home, and, like, I've only been home for, like, a day and a half every week or so. It's been it's been a lot, because we're, uh, we're driving up a lot, and it's, uh, oh, the project's it's a, a lot of work. You work hard. Well, huh? so speaking of hardworking, <laughs> our guest tonight is Carmen De La Paz. I don't know. Do you know her? Have you met her in person? I've, I've never met her, and I'm so excited, too, because I know she's kind of like uh, another DIY gal that also dabbles in TV or does DIY yes. on TV. And she does everything. I mean, she's a singer. She's a cook. She's bilingual. She does carpentry. She does woodworking. She does glass and metalwork. I mean, honestly, I don't think there's anything this woman can't do, but I'm going to try to nail it down and find out what she can't do. <laughs> no, I'm super excited to talk to her. I'm curious about the bilingual aspect. Yeah, I gotta find the huh? I'm going to find a chink in her armor. What, what can she not do? <laughs> what is she not good at? Poor Carmen. Right? <laughs> oh, she's ready. She's listening, I'm sure. <laughs> So um, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully she'll pop in. I just sent her an invite, so hopefully we'll get her in. Yeah, hopefully we get her. Yeah, I'm really curious to know about the bilingual market, just because it's something that like I'm, I'm kind of bilingual, but not like I'm not bilingual. You know, I can communicate. What is what is it if you're one language and a half? <laughs> That's what I am. Uh, one point five. 
Spanish? Yeah, 1.5 lingual. That's me. I speak about 0.5 Spanish. No, I don't speak it. I can understand it. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I communicate on, like, site, and it's not, I'm not always grammatically correct, but, like, I can, I can communicate <laughs> enough. <laughs> Do people, like, yell at you and tell you you're wrong? No, not really. I'm usually asking them, like, hey, did I say this right? And this and that. So, like, like basic stuff. When you start like talking about certain like tools, like I went to go pick up irrigation stuff for the guys, and like they, he didn't he didn't speak English enough, so we speak in Spanish together. Um, and uh -huh. he was trying to tell me like, and I was at the store really hard on the phone when you're um, when you're on the phone listening to Spanish, and it's not like I'm not fluent, so like he's like, oh like un capa oh, de pinto, yeah. like, like smooth or like I can't remember how they say it, if it's um if it's threaded or not. Four I gotta three, ask him again. But yeah, oh, man, all I remember is the when we had um, some contractors who came and had to take care of all the drainage issues that we were having under our house, and the guys would go, the pipe, the pipe, and I'm like, okay, the pipe, I get it, pipe. Oh. <laughs> same, almost the same words. Well, some of the words are super simple like that, and then some of them are like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> I got, I have decent job site language, but still, like it, it's something I'm always working on. So I think, actually what I want to do, so my son plays, it's kind of a game, but it's an educational game called Duolingo. Have you ever heard of this? It's an app on your phone. Yeah, yeah. He does it for German. And I'm telling you, he's learned more from this app than he has from his German class in school. And I'm seriously thinking about, like, just while I'm waiting or, you know, where I'm just kind of trying to kill time, I might go on Duolingo and, and really brush up on my Spanish. Because I, I took, I think... I think three or four years of it in school. I mean, I had a year in elementary school and a year in year two in junior, and then I think a couple years in. I don't know. Anyway, I lost track. <laughs> but it's been too long, so I forgot a lot of it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No. I um. I've heard of that. I think I actually played it for a while, but I I stopped. I think that's the right app. But it was pretty cool. Is Carmen uh, uh Carmen? If you're out there, I we, know. You. we want yeah. you. Come on, Carmen. I just sent her another email. Let me um just make sure. Yeah. Hmm. No makeup. <laughs> you look lovely, by the way. Did you get your hair so, done? So, just because I love you guys, I'm wearing Christmas jammies. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's I'm awesome. From Target. They're so soft. Little dogs. Little dogs with like Christmas wreaths on them. Aww. <laughs> well, since Carmen's not here yet, I'll show you my Duluth shirt. It's a uh, nice little oh, button. Yeah. Yeah, I wore it to work today. I got nice. a little stain on it. I was a little bummed. A really little. That's pretty good for like. I mean, um, <laughs> I was I was I did some staining today, but mostly I ran around and was on the phone and fun stuff like that. Did you get that? Oh, um, did you get that on Black Friday or anything? Because uh, I did take advantage of Black Friday sales. Oh, here comes Carmen. I did get this jean shirt, but it's like kind of thick, and it has snaps, and it has a big breast, bigger chested ladies. Uh -huh. it has, so that your you know doesn't pop open. Oh my god, that is the best invention ever! I have that issue and all the time. It's like, the it's, side side. it's like the center side boob peak. Like it's stretchy. <laughs> yes, I you know I always have to use those three M strips, those three M tape strips. Carmen, welcome. <laughs> She's oh, like, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> already. You know what we're talking about. <laughs> I have to admit, I've used my Scotch Blue and the 3M stuff in very creative <laughs> well, ways as well. well. Especially when it comes to curves. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's no, so I, I, 3M actually makes wardrobe strips. Have you found those? Yes. <laughs> when, when you can't buy Duluth clothing for everything, because Duluth makes awesome clothing. <laughs> yeah, no, so that's Duluth, is that jacket, and they have like the... Yes. What do you call it? It's like that. Okay, so. Button. <laughs> and it's stretchy. <laughs> and it has little snap. It's awesome. It's like a shirt, but it's kind of thick. So it's perfect. Like here, it's 45 and raining out. So I put this on and I'm like, ah, it's really warm. You know, roll up the sleeves. It's very fashionable. Anyway, I love it. This is one of the things I got. Carmen, I love this one the best. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's super rad. Um, but Carmen, are you familiar with Duluth Trading Company? Oh my gosh, of course I am. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It almost looks like you're wearing a Duluth hat. What do I? No, this is actually this is Levi today. 
Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah. I love that. I don't yeah. know if I could rock that hat, but it's really cute. Thank you. Well, you guys know I have a, a hat fetish, so I've got a lot of them. You have a, you have a small head or medium head or a large head? I have a small like, what head. Is your head. I have a small head, but a lot of hair. I have a, a hat fetish, so I've got a lot of them. You have a, you have a small head? Oh wait, so I think we're getting feedback from your comments. Do you have any other windows open? There we go. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Cool. Was it you, um, Sarah? The, it's not you, Sarah. Sorry. <laughs> I realized I had the no, open. I, I muted Carmen for just a second. Let me try to unmute her then. <laughs> Poor Carmen. <laughs> She's like, unmute, uh, unmute. Are you good? Can I unmute her? Oh, gosh, Carmen, I muted you and now I can't unmute like, you. Hold on. She's like, thanks, guys. <laughs> I know. Unmute you. Screw you. Talk tonight. Now it won't. I see the problem. <sighs> Carmen, you're going to have to sign language us pretty soon. Hopefully <laughs> she's trilingual. Oh, trilingual. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, can you start signing? I wouldn't be able to know. Here we go. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Oh, you go. Go. oh, good. I did. No, I, what? I, she did, too. <laughs> <laughs> Throw us off, man. Well, you guys have to congratulate me. This is the first time I've done the Google Hangout video thing like this. It's pretty cool. So, you know, it's congratulations it's to awesome. you guys. Thank you. And there's, we always have technical issues. So don't think it's you. It is always. There's always something. Am I right, Sarah? Yeah, always. Always. So, sh Brittany, should we jump always. into questions for Carmen? Yes. Yeah, we should probably get off of boobs and heads now. <laughs> 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 I love it. So I I'm particularly interested in because she studied you studied you were a music major. Was it musical theater that you studied in college? But how do you transition from that working metal working? Like tell me about that, because that's a pretty big jump. That's actually a very good question and one I get asked often. I am a music theater major. I sing and I dance. I've been on Broadway singing and dancing. I play nine instruments. I got a full scholarship to college for the violin. So I'm wow. pretty, um, pretty well-developed musician, have sang all over. And actually, I opened the Latin Image Awards at the Beverly Hilton three or four years ago, singing and dancing, and surprised a lot of people in Hollywood that Carmen can sing and dance. But at the end of the day, what happened was is I went to New York, and I was a very typical actor who did not want to sign up for the starving artist program, meaning that I did not want to live in a dumpy apartment. So I rented a dumpy apartment. I told the <laughs> landlord to lower the rent, pay for all of the materials, and I would fix it up. And literally, you guys, that's when, before I even started anything, I had not done anything. And it was all like going to the big box stores and going, hi, can you tell me how to drywall? Hi, I need to do this. And literally this apartment that I rented had a yes. hole in the bedroom. I could see my washer and dryer in the basement. The bathroom had only the plumbing <laughs> pipes, like no hardy backer that, board, nothing. That was and a laundry chute. Yes. Carmen, that, that was a laundry chute. <laughs> correct. And, and that's how I started. I figured out that you're hardwired. You know, I really believe that just like some people are great at math, at computers, there are those of us, like you ladies, who we, yes. we are hardwired to being creative, to power tools, to saving money, to, ooh, I don't want to throw that away because I can turn it into that. And once you realize that you have that, it becomes almost like an addiction. How much more money can I save? What can I make more creative? Oh, well, now I learned how to cut wood on a miter saw. Well, now I can use a router. Oh, boy, and now I'm going to use a lathe. And for me, it became layered information. I'm the first person to tell you guys I'm a layman. Most of what we do is on the job training, getting blisters, cut splinters, and doing it. And I'm sorry, 
but you can't learn it in a classroom, kids. So it's one of the amazing things that if you're naturally invited into the world of being creative, the next thing is power tools to be able to do what you want to really do. And going back to the original question, which was, I want to save money. Yeah. That's awesome. No, yeah. That is such a cool story. Okay, but here's the thing, Carmen, because this is what I think. I think there's a lot of people that may have that hardwiring but don't realize it because they don't believe in themselves. Like, don't Absolutely. you feel like there's a big percentage of people that just, they kind of see what other people do and say, well, I can't do that. And, of course, you can. If you say you can't do it, then you're not going to do it. And I'm always saying that to my kids. Like, yeah, if you say you can't do it, you can't do it. So don't even try. But if you're going to try and say, maybe I can. I you completely know? Agree. wonder how many of you know, I, I, I first experienced that with my first show on HETV many, many years ago um, on Hammerheads, which was the first show after 10 shows now on HETV and a bunch of other shows, that people just need somebody to say, yes, you can. And it's really not that scary. And one of the biggest things, and you're so right, Brittany, the biggest gift that you are giving your child and that I want to give to so many women, which is really what I feel is my responsibility, not only on television, but being with you guys is empowering you to believe that there's nothing you can't do. And people tell me all the time, Carmen, oh my God, you do this, you do that, and what, what you, don't you do? And my answer is always, I'm always going to try everything <laughs> because then I always am going to know what I don't like, what I'm good at, and what I don't want to do again. But at least I tried. And most people, if you break it down to trying and then you learn and you apply yourself even just a little bit out of all the things that we've just talked about in the last five minutes that I do, I tell you from the bottom of my heart, it's because I put a lot of work into it. And I promise you that you two and everybody else out there, if you really dedicated the same amount of time, I promise you, I can almost guarantee you're going to get the same result. You just haven't put in the time. So I'm going to challenge you to do oh, yeah. <laughs> You know? I mean, it's like you know, well, nobody gets on that bike and ride on your page. You have a great quote on your page. What does it say? Like, if a human can do it, there's a 95% chance that you can. Yeah. Yeah, that's my motto. Someone rides the bike the first time. They have to get on and actually learn how to, to do it. So, yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to probably – start building like houses or things like that you got to build up to it well but, i tell people all the time there's not yeah. one contractor in this world that was born with a drill in their hand nobody sorry it didn't happen <laughs> you know right yeah well you find that people actually um in your experience carmen you find that uh women or just people in general are wanting to learn these things or are they more um wanting pe other people to do it for them no um you know what's really cool is, is I started in English language television here in the United States. And five years ago, I was lucky enough to land on Fox International, which put me in Spanish language in 17 countries. In countries where women are told you're not supposed to do a power tool, it's a man's job. You really can't. And the most amazing blessing as almost like a rebound back to myself was hearing from so many women saying... I want to learn and thank you for teaching me and I don't care if my husband doesn't let me. I went and bought a drill. I bought a jigsaw. I bought a circular saw. And at the end of the day, everybody, I don't care if you're a man, a woman, an old person, a young person, you want to feel proud of your house. And sometimes we all don't have the resources to have the opulent house or everything that we want to have. But the minute that you can start making, start painting, and starting, start to make things look nicer, you're going to feel better about your home, you're going to feel better about yourself, and you're going to save a ton of money. And there's nothing better, and you guys know this, and you guys know from working with other people, there's nothing better in the world when somebody comes into your house and they look at something and go, oh my gosh, that is so cool, and that you can turn around and go, I made it. Or I painted it, or I did <laughs> it. That is the most, I'm getting chills as I'm telling you this, because that's the gift that I hope people understand and the fear I want to take away from a, from a tool because the payback, not only in equity from your home and, and compliments, but it's that whole self-gratifying thing. You know, I've, 
I've witnessed a lot of women when we walk into their homes to do their shows, they're shy, they might feel intimidated, and the minute that they pop that first nail gun, and you guys know that feeling, or the minute that they cut and they make that first cut and it goes through and nothing happened and they didn't get cut and nothing fell apart, that moment of empowerment, and the next day, that same woman is standing a little taller. Now she starts to wear makeup. And by day four, when we're doing our reveal, she is looking kick butt because of the That's empowerment process that she went through. That people see all of the reality and the tears and they want to go to the sob story and then they want to go to the last 30 seconds of the pan. And you guys all know it, that before and the after. And I say that my job in television is not glamorous because I'm usually dirty. I've got bruises. I'm cut. You know that. The reveal shot, I am not in it. That's the glory. But what I want more people to experience and to see, which is what I'm hoping to do next, is that aha moment to experience when people feel empowerment because you feel it, you see it, and it's something you can never, ever take away. And that is the magic. And some people think it's DIY and it's creative and we're saving money, but it's a mission that is bigger than that. You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of cool stuff all over the world in Puerto Rico and South Africa, and the wood is merely the vehicle, but it's an empowerment through which we are working that people are, are receiving with what we're giving in knowledge. You guys too, that's what you're doing. So I congratulate you and my hat's off to you and thank you and keep going and I'm proud of you. Really, it's awesome, you guys, both of you, really. Well, Carmen, I'm really, I'm really curious like how, like obviously Brittany and I are familiar with the United States and like our culture and what we're doing and, and we're kind of the, you know, there's not that many female contractors out there. Um, but I'm really curious, like in the other uh, other places of the world, like Latin America, these other places that you're working, how is that different and how much is it different? I'm, I'm super curious. Oh, um, well, it's way different because you're not going to find a woman wielding a power tool there. You know, oh, at all? Like, at all? Like, like, hardly at all. I mean, no. they're going to be an anomaly. They're going to be, you know, like maybe even almost like a little like weird, you know, like doing a manly thing. The only exception to that in Puerto Rico, you'll find it a lot. Why? Puerto Rico is part of the United States. We have a lot of access to the tools and the knowledge and the English and the Spanish balancing. The socioeconomic and political influence comes from the United States. Then you're talking about countries like Mexico, all of Latin America. I was in Cuba two years ago on, a, on an artistic exchange, on, an, on, a travel tour, on a travel artistic visa from the United States as an artist. And I didn't know that my Spanish shows were being shown in Cuba. Like people oh my come to me in Cuba going, what are you doing here? But, you know, and women in Cuba are said, one woman comes up to me and, and I, was, I was at a pool and I went to get a beach towel and she hands me the beach towel. She goes, oh my God, you're Carmen. What are you doing? I'm muchacha que tu haces aquí, you know, like that. <laughs> and I was like, um, you know, because they don't get people from television in Cuba. And what she said to me is, Carmen, even though we don't have the tools, even though we might not have all the paint and the pretty blue tape, you give us hope that we can live nicely and you give us ways to be creative. So to answer your question, Sarah, you know, it is completely different. Women aren't supposed to. You know, so for me to have come in with my show, Be Handy Con Carmen, in my workshop, like most of the men there would tell their families that they didn't think it was really my workshop or they didn't think I was really doing the work. So it's you been a really, I'm sorry. That discredited a lot. You got discredited? Like people won't okay. give you credit for what you're doing. Ask uh, credited a lot. Oh, um, I mean, I don't think it was to the point of discredited in the sense, but it's like they didn't believe it, you know, but, Thank God that I was a producer on the show and I created the show idea. So I made sure that in all the cuts, you really saw me doing the cuts, whether it was stone, if I was welding, like you really saw me. And then I also have, um, uh, actually the first place that I, I am, I'm doing a little bit more touch-ups is on own for makeup, but on HETV, on NBC, on, on, on uh, Fox International, 
for my shows, I won't let them do makeup touch-ups on me because I want you to see the fact that I look beat up by the time I do the end of the shows, you know? Uh, on one show on Hammerheads, you'll see I literally have a different color Band-Aid on every finger because I had gone through, I had gone through the adult Band-Aids. The reveal was 1.30 in the morning, which you'll never know when you're watching it at home. I had put in one thousand pounds of plaster of Paris by myself in three days oh my and the lime had eaten through my fingers. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know, so I make a point of people seeing the fact that if plaster falls on my face, don't you dare touch me up. If I got paint on my shirt, yeah. don't you dare make me change yeah. to my other shirt because of the fact that, you know, people don't want to believe that we do the work. So I make a point of in every show that I'm doing that, that I, I don't have most, you guys know, a lot of carpenters on TV have backup carpenters. Most people have their work done. And if you're a personality, you come in and you stand in front of the job and you talk about it and then you leave. I refuse to stand in front of anybody's work that isn't mine. And if that yeah, means I have to stay longer, Sarah, you're the same way. You told me that early on. She she said they, they always tell her, you know, we have other people to do that. She's like, no, I like to do it. <laughs> but you know what, Sarah? You know what, Sarah? I congratulate you, and I watched your reel, and I could tell. And so oh. I congratulate you because you and I are probably one of the few really, re you know, I'm sorry. My respects to everybody. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I mean, I, I watched your, your reel, Sarah, and I can tell. I can tell you're in the trenches. I can tell you're doing the work and my hat's off to you. And I love that because guess what? We're still fabulous. Even if we're dirty and we don't have all of our makeup on and who cares if we're not, you know, television perfect, we're empowering the team, <laughs> doing the work. And at the end of the day, people want to see the work. They want to see the work and they want to know that you really did it. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's called being real. I mean, it's really, that's being real. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, unless I love it. That's also the reason why my stuff is so crazy and creative. It's because I'm just making it up as I go. You know what I mean? Or this has got to work with this, and this has got to work with that. Oh, and I was listening to your guys, or you guys earlier about burning into wood. Yeah, I've done yeah. a ton of it. Pyrography pens. I'll tell you the brands later. But you also can use okay. a uh, um, a uh, soldering iron will give you a bigger tip. Get an adapter for temperature to get a warmer. The harder the wood, the higher the temperature. The softer the wood, the lower the temperature. And then, Sarah, to answer your question about it wearing away over winter and time, use a thin resin epoxy mix and seal it with that. And it won't break down. It's like a boat sealer, and it will stay the same color forever. Merry Christmas. Okay, okay. say that again. <laughs> <laughs> you know the two-part epoxy. You know the two-part epoxy resin, right? Okay. I'm having you take a mental note for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, Carmen. The two part by Envirotech. I think they make they make there's a resin. There's different brands, but there's there's okay. different brands. But just for look for a two-part epoxy resin. One is the hardener, and one is the actual resin. Some of them you have to add, do an additive where it's a certain small little uh, teaspoon to the quantity. The one that I like to use is a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? And then all you, you can either pour it on in thin layers and almost create like a tray so it levels, it's self-leveling and creates glass. Or the reason I'm telling you, Sarah, for this particular issue is it works like paint. So you huh. brush it on, it oh, absorbs I into the wood, and it hardens that wood, it seals the wood, and it makes it water impenetrable. Interesting. All right, well, I took my notes. So give it a sign. I'm sorry, guys. I can talk. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I know. What are you drinking? <laughs> Perrier. Oh, yeah. I don't do alcohol. So, hey. I don't do sugar. I'm a vegetarian. So, Carmen. Yes. 
But then, like, doesn't it always have a, does it have a gloss to it? Have you found that it's more of a, a matte finish? If you if you brush it on, the wood will actually absorb it in, and you won't get a high gloss. You'll get like a sat. And then okay. if you get a satin and you don't like it, just um, brandish it back with like a 400 grit. So you're just taking the sheen off, but you're not taking the ceiling. You're not, you're not taking away any of the thickness. Okay. Gotcha. Oh man, that's super valuable. Super stoked. Yeah, I was trying to think like, what else can I do to push like the, I'm wrapping up a pilot right now. And I'm like, I want to take the creativity like one step further. That's by tomorrow. So I think I might do some wood burning and that'd be cool. Cool. Well, you can. You have one eight hundred Carmen. Questions are always free. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I can't wait. No, I'm, I'm going to use that. <laughs> Do, it. Do it. I will. I will. Um, what else do you got for? Or are we running out of time? What time is it? Oh, we got time. No, I want to ask her a little bit more about the humanitarian work that she's done. Like, are there any that you know? Any that you you have? I think it was your favorite or like that had the most. Yeah, I actually just got back in August from South Africa and it was an amazing experience. Um, I was invited to South Africa by the former technological advisor to Nelson Mandela. His name is Dr. Wow. Roy Marcus. He's now the chairperson for um, the Johannesburg University and is also uh, one of the leaders over at the Nelson Mandela University and I'm on a committee for the American Association of Wood Turners called Turners Without Borders and what we do is we take wood turning to areas that need um, empowerment with knowledge as well as eco econom economically um, so for the last three years I did it in Puerto Rico introducing artisans to wood turning and bringing up their level and now in, in South Africa we're doing two things. I started a small micro economy in a town called Karatara which is a forestry town full of people who no longer have forests to cut down so they're socially challenged um, and I taught the mayor how to wood turn and some other students and we're starting a wood turning program in a tertiary school there and the Nelson Mandela University MBA program will help them then develop the marketing and the strategies for their businesses. I'm also well working with the Nelson Mandela University forestry program to start a wood turning program there. At the end of the day, um, I know we're closing what that did for me and my trip there. You guys know I've taught a ton of people on television, in my shop, you know, every day. It's about sharing knowledge for me. And we all want to do something good in the world, and we all want to think that we can make a difference. And with so many things going on, so many wars, so much racism, so, many, so much judgment going on, we're left to feel this big and that we can't do anything. And through my trip in South Africa, where I met people who are hungry for knowledge, who want to learn, who want to make money, who you know, who don't make hardly any money and by us giving them knowledge and by what you two are doing um, on the internet and doing everything that you're doing, you're giving knowledge and knowledge is something you cannot take away from anyone. And so what I learned through my trip to South Africa, through everything that I want to share with you guys and anybody who's watching us that has to do with how to save money, how to be creative, how to empower yourself, how to be better with yourself, I want you to believe that you can make a difference because that's what I learned. I can make a difference and I'm making a difference for those people and for people in Puerto Rico. And, and it's humbled me and makes me feel stupid to believe that I couldn't or to think that I was insignificant. And this experience, other things that are going on in life for me, um, you know, really have proven to me that God gives you things if you believe in God or universe or whatever you want to believe in. I don't care what energy it is. We all have a purpose here and we all can help one, one another and we all don't have to go down this negative road. And there you are, ladies. We can make a difference, really. Carmen, I'm curious, That's awesome. Do you find that um, when you go to some of these other countries and you're helping people, do you find that the women are more receptive to your help than the men or are they equally receptive? I think the cool thing about what you find in the Carmen De La Paz package is I'm five foot two. So, you know, people are surprised I can lift a 90 pound bag of cement and I can do these tools. 
I got this face that kind of looks like Mickey Mouse when I smile. So little kids are like, you know, like, hey, you know, it's a simple oh So like people are more open <laughs> to somebody who's smiley and warm and you know what I mean? So once you break down the barrier with just being a warm person, you know, yeah. I've, I've been in Puerto Rico and I had the former chief of police, 73 years old, retired, crying thanking me that he had learned more with me in three days than he had in 45 days, 45 years by himself behind the lake. You know, oh, you're just like, oh, wow. oh my God, you know, so I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You know, it's, it's, it's an amazing, crazy sure, I think, thing. I think what you're saying without saying it is that you're walking into these situations with a sense of confidence and a sense of giving and like, you don't care what other people are thinking of you. You're there to give something and, they can take it or not and i think by that presence it breaks down their barriers so that absolutely sarah you know we're all in a very competitive world in a very competitive business and people see us all be happy go lucky and it's an intense you know it's intense business especially the television aspect of it you know and there's competition or even in woodworking as artists there's competition you know and I refuse to be competitive because I don't believe that what you have is what I have and what I have is what you have. And I believe in killing people with kindness. So those people who come off with an attitude because they think that I might be that or they think that I might be the other thing, they haven't given me a chance. And I'm going to kill them with kindness and they're going to walk away going, oh my God, she was like so cool. <laughs> I like lay down my sword, you guys, you know. I'm 50 years old. I'm done fighting. I'm done messing what? with egos. I am done. I am like here to like empower, do great things, share amazing times with you guys. I would love for you guys to come to my shop and play someday. I am, oh, not, about, I am not about keeping anything for myself or trying to be better than anybody else. I want to make others better than me and I want to feel good about myself, you know, I've been through a lot in my life, you guys. We'll share it some other time, but a lot of that comes from who I am today and where I'm going tomorrow. And yeah. I've done a lot, but I feel like I've not done half of what I want to do. So watch out. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. So where, where do you live? Like, what state do you live in, Carmen? Well, actually, you guys are the first to know, because I've not announced this on social media, but I've moved from Los Angeles in the last month. I now live in Austin, Texas. I have. Oh, I love Austin. I just awesome. um, signed a lease on a 3,000 square foot shop. It's beautiful. Nice. And I'm going to have a school. I'm teaching. I'm going to do my, my YouTube channel from there. I hope to do more television, continue to do that. I just wrapped on my second season with um, Homemade Simple on the Oprah Winfrey Network. We premiere in January. Um, you know, so I'm just looking to continue to be creative, continue to do what I do. If television follows me and gives me opportunities, fabulous, I'll continue to do that. And yeah. if not, you know, you'll still find me on the internet and everywhere else, because I'm not gonna stop doing okay, what I do. You. That's it. Well, yeah. okay, if I'm in the Austin area, I would definitely call you, and if you're in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, hook me up, or look me up, and we'll get it together and have coffee or something, or come over to my shop. Big I would love to put each of you behind a wood turning lathe. It is the last. Oh, it is the last tool that a woodworker tries. So allow me the honor to teach each of you. Really, I mean it. Oh my gosh! I, I I'm still hitting you up. Come to Austin. I have eight <laughs> lathes and a full flat shop. We've got a metal shop. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Come play. Oh my gosh! I'm so excited. That's so rad. I would like to come out there. <laughs> Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Rad. Thank you. So I, I need to find out what's the one thing, you don't have to tell me more than one, what's the one thing you're not good at, you don't like doing, or just, you know, what's that thing that you can't do? Because we know you really can, can't do everything, right? I am horrible with a remote control for television. Don't ask me to hook up a television <laughs> set. Don't ask me to DVR anything. Don't ask me to find a channel. Don't ask nothing. I, electronics, no way. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm good with that. I'm great with the computer editing, all that kind of stuff. But do not. I would not have expected that answer. <laughs> I tell people all the time. I do TV. I only watch select TV. <laughs> yeah, very true. 
That's for sure. Carmen, how long have you been doing TV in your career? Over 30 years. I'm, this is my 53rd television show. This is my eighth television network. So you're not going anywhere oh, soon, I don't think. That's incredible. No, no, you know, it's funny. I tell my mom all the time, you know, I've, I've tried to walk away from television, but it keeps grabbing me, you know. It's been, wow. thank God, but every time, like, one show ends, like, literally within a month, another show calls or another network calls, and I don't know how they figure it out. I have no idea, but you know, I I have the benefit that, um, like last year for a couple of years, I was able to shoot with Telemundo and NBC at the same time, and we did George to the Rescue in English, and we did Jorge al Rescate in Spanish, and I literally did one take in English, one take in Spanish, oh, yeah. one take in English. That's and one awesome. So yeah, you're like kind of doing two shows at once, yeah. and that's a lot of what I did for 3M and as a Scotch Blue spokesperson. You know, I really uh, want to do more of that. And that's why, like, my YouTube channel is in both languages. Everything I tape in English, I tape it in Spanish at the same time. And that's more of what I want to do in television and how I reach people because I think that language crosses so many barriers. And um, unfortunately, Spanish language, creative people, artists, DIYers are underserved. They don't have the information. They don't have as many YouTube videos. They don't have as much... Um, you know, content that's ready for them. And um, I've found, uh, you know, imagine most of your YouTube stuff is going to the United States and a couple of other countries. You hit Spanish language and now you're automatically in 18 to 20 countries like that. Yeah. You know, so um, I want to do more Spanish language and, and just really um, continue to empower people, women, young people. Um, I say all the time that, you know, men respect me uh you know uh men in the industry respect me and that's what gives me a certain amount of credibility you know and i've i love uh just the creative exchange with anybody you know it's not about male female old young you know it's about let's go play let's go make something let's make something better let's help somebody else you know um yeah. it doesn't matter who you are let's just play yeah wow Oh, that's super cool. You have so much wisdom. I'm sorry, honey? You have so much wisdom. I really I really enjoyed listening to you tonight. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. You know, one of the next things that I'm planning to do, it'll be announced, but I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of career, a creative career development because I find a lot of people have come to me, a lot of friends. Carmen, can you help me package this show? Carmen, can you pitch this show? Carmen, what do you think about this segment? Carmen, can you watch me on camera? Carmen... Because most people, you guys don't know, is that for 10 years, I was an executive at Warner Brothers. I was the director of TV publicity. So in my 20s, I was uh, an executive and, and wielded a lot of really cool experiences. What has allowed me to leverage myself as a TV personality. The theater career helps me be, you know, understand camera, a story, how to get across to people. Warner Brothers experience made me a business person. The hard knocks of life gave me my heart and all the cuts and bruises and banging and cement bags have made my career. And I, you know, I really am 50, you guys. This doesn't happen overnight, you know? So. I can't believe I can't you're 50. That. Okay, you have to show some ID. I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you're 30. <laughs> and Thank you. Yeah. But like I said, vegetarian, no alcohol little sugar and I really believe that working physically keeps me young you know that I have to haul the wood and cut the wood and you know it just keeps me young it keeps me wanting to be fit it keeps me wanting to be under a certain weight you know getting up and down off of that floor with 10 pounds more ain't fun you know it just ain't Oh. Well, I just want to say Absolutely. to you guys, congratulations to you both. You both have amazing numbers on on social media. That's not an easy thing to do in our genre. I'm very proud of you as young women. Please count on me as a mentor, whatever you guys need. Call me. If, I'm in, if you guys are in Austin, come see me. If you see that I'm in your town or in your area through social media, hunt me down. And if you're in Austin, on top of it, I cook real good. 
So you have <laughs> <a nice laughs> for me, okay? But seriously, congratulations to both of you, and please consider me your servant in our DIY world, and I mean it. Thanks, oh, Carmen. You're so sweet. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for joining us. I really enjoyed it. Thank I you, guys. Sada, fingers crossed for you. Knock it out, girl. Get that show. Happy <laughs> to you. <laughs> thank you so much, Carmen. Oh, my gosh. Oh. This has been so much fun. Um, I probably say thank you to Duluth uh, Trading for sponsoring our chat. And Definitely. My gosh. We say, we say gracias. Gracias, Duluth Trading Company. Muchas gracias, Duluth Trading Company. Hasta la próxima. Aquí and DIY. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Oh. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, Carmen. We'll be in touch. You too. All the best to you, really. Bring me in on a project. Let's play. Let's do it. Sounds like fun. Bye-bye, right. <laughs> you guys. All right. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.